So y'all should know I follow birth rate trends like some basketball fans follow the number of scores or assists or whatever. So let's talk a little bit about Utah. Utah sees the sharpest fertility rate decline in nation as cost of parenthood increase. This is important to me because y'all should know I am on team let the birth rate plummet to hell. I say that quite often. Periodically, I'll have conservatives come into my page or into my space to say, yeah, let the liberals, let the progressives birth rates decline. Look, birth rates are declining all over the country. And let's, that's why I said we're going to talk specifically first about Utah. The number of children born to mothers in Utah has plummeted in recent years, declining faster than any other state. The study revealed that while the national fertility rate fell by 18.4% between 2005 and 2023, Utah's rate dropped nearly 36%. In 2005, Utah had 92.8 births per 1,000 teens and women between 15 to 44. By 2023, that number had fallen to 59.6, marking a 35.8% decline. There was a survey embedded in this article saying, why do you think Utah's birth rate is falling? And 53% says cost of raising a child. All right, it says, despite this significant drop, Utah still had the eighth highest fertility rate in the country in 2023. Other Western states such as Arizona and Nevada also experienced notable declines of 32.8% and 31.3% respectively. The report's authors attribute the decline to financial factors. The cost of childbirth and raising a child has surged, rising by 35% over the past two years alone. Devya Sangha Meshwar, a lending tree insurance researcher said, especially in 2025 where everyone is watching every single dollar, it's just not feasible for families planning to have more children simply because they may not be able to afford to. Sangha Meshwar added, The rising costs associated with having a child, combined with inflation and job insecurity, could prompt families to delay or forego having children. For women who don't have adequate insurance coverage, the costs associated with pregnancy, childbirth, postnatal care will set um, set them more than $18,000 back for a vaginal delivery. Even with insurance coverage, the average cost of giving birth is close to $7,000. These high costs are also a deterrent to having children. And most times the women get ladled with that on top of having to take a maternity leave. And sometimes companies are not paying maternity leave. So women get all of these financial impacts. And yeah, that's the reason why women are opting out. It says, currently, South Dakota holds the highest fertility rate in the nation, while Vermont has the lowest. I looked up how many babies South Dakota had just because I was wondering. In 2023 and 2024, the people, in, the women in South Dakota had approximately, well, just over 11,000 births. Just to compare, in the city of Chicago, there were close to 27,000 births. So I'm just showing you the comparison because South Dakota has a much smaller population. So even the whole city of Chicago had more babies than the whole state of, um, of South Dakota. So we specifically talked about Utah, but the decline is all over the place. And this Newsweek article is talking about the 21 states where deaths are outnumbering births. So we have women opting out of having babies. We have more deaths than births. That means that we're going to have a contraction of population in many of these states. And some of these communities are going to get really old really fast because the young people are going to leave these aging communities. Communities. And on top of that, we have a, a, you know, we got people pushing out or running out the undocumented immigrants. They're plucking them up off the streets and terrorizing them. So they're going to run even more people out of these communities as well. But now let's get into this article. Deaths currently outnumber births in 21 states, which have reported dramatic fertility rate drops over the past 20 years, according to a new study by Lending Tree, as rising costs of starting a family continues weighing on cost burden households. Births in the United States have consistently declined over the past two decades, according to government figures, to the point that the U.S. fertility rate is now well below the level necessary to maintain the country's population. 
In 2024, according to the CDC, births in the country remained near record low levels with just over 3.6 million babies born in the country, approximately 1.6 births per woman over her lifetime. Americans would need to hit an average of 2.1 children over their lifetime to maintain the current U.S. population levels through births alone. That means without immigration. And I have seen where some people are trying to say, let's get to 2.7, but that's clearly not going to happen. It is a bit of a grim prospect for a country that is expected to face a silver tsunami soon as the youngest baby boomers reach the age of 65 and build up the number of America's elderly population with dire consequences for the United States healthcare system, workforce, pensions, and economy. And also the healthcare system is being burdened because we have a government that is trying to wipe out Medicaid. So we're going to have a run, I mean, whatever little... Um, bit of hospitals are left are going to be jacked up and they're running out medical professionals. So I'm saying all of this is going on at the exact same time. We have an aging population that is going to be struggling to even find care. So how is that going to exacerbate the deaths? Where do deaths already outnumber births? The 21 states where deaths already outnumbered births in 2022, the latest available year for both data points were Pennsylvania, Florida, West Virginia, Ohio, Michigan, Maine, Oregon, Kentucky, Alabama, Delaware, South Carolina, Mississippi, Missouri, um, Tennessee, New Hampshire, Arkansas, New Mexico, Vermont, Wisconsin, Montana, and Rhode Island. And not in this video, but I do need to check of those 21 um, uh, states, which one have extra strict forced birther laws and which ones are also on top of that red states, because I have a feeling that it's going to contract even further. I'm just putting that out there that those states will continue to see a contraction of their population. Pennsylvania saw the biggest discrepancy between births and deaths that year. So it had over six, close to 17,000 more deaths than births. Florida was second with the closest at close to 15,000, possibly due to its large elderly population, even as it remains one of the fastest growing states in the U.S. And that was followed by West Virginia, close to 11,000, Ohio, close to 10,000, and Michigan, a little over 8,000. The drop in birth rates in these states is likely to have an enormous impact on the lives of those living there. Older Americans tend to have greater health care needs, including chronic disease management, hospitalizations, and long-term care. Devia Sangameshwar said in a report, an aging population will also have fewer younger, healthier individuals getting policies. With fewer young, healthy individuals to balance the cost of insuring older, higher-risk individuals, health insurance premiums will rise for all policyholders policy to reflect a growing risk. This is also going to be impacted as more and more people get kicked off of Medicaid. We are about to have a full on tsunami. It's a slow moving tsunami, considering many of these policies don't go into effect until 2026. People are about to get hit hard, but they don't see it because in this country, we have so many fires going on daily that they don't see this big old fire that is about to come in this country. Trump and his dumb MAGA administration talking about a $5,000 baby bonus and ministration education courses. Like that's really going to turn anything around considering how much it costs to raise kids. According to um, Lending Tree, the cost to raise a child has risen by 35.7% in the past two years. Nobody is going to take anybody like Donald Trump saying, I'll give you a $5,000 baby bonus seriously because that is dumb. May the birth rate continue to plummet to hell because these people do not understand the financial burden associated with it right now because they are too dumb to actually think about the impact. They want babies, but they're not thinking about anything like cost. Where are their hospitals around? Are the schools closing down? These people have no foresight and what's going to continue to happen is going to get worse. I'm going to end it there. There are more articles for me to talk about, but I'll continue this conversation later. Join the conversation. Are you on team? Let the birth rate plummet to hell. Are you on team? Let's have some babies and stuff. Let me know in the comments.